The Master Chief was enhanced and trained for one purpose. To win this war. Covenant forces appear to be excavating some kind of object. When I touched the object, I felt something. Hello, Master Chief. I'm Cortana. Master Chief recovered something. Sacred ring. Halo. Find the halo. Win the war. Welcome back everyone. This is going to be my Halo trailer video. That's right. There's a new Halo TV series. You probably heard about it. You've probably seen a couple of the trailers so far. We'll break it down. There's a bunch of Easter eggs and I'll explain how this is connected to the games and what they're doing from the game story. Because even if you don't know all the Halo lore or like the complete story of the series, you probably played at least one of the games at some point. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get the episodes. I will do a full video for episode one and we'll see how everybody likes it. And if everybody's really down for it, then I'll do videos for all the episodes, but it'll be 10 episodes total. It's starting March 24th, which was my prediction that it would start right before Marvel's Moon Knight series. And I will be doing full Moon Knight episodes too. We also get our first look at the version of Cortana that they're going to do on the TV show. It's being played by the same actress who does Cortana in the video game. So there should be some parody. She does look pretty close to the video game version. To make another Marvel Iron Man comparison, she's kind of like Jarvis and Friday. Even though she is an AI, she is a huge character within the story. But as you can see from the general gist of the trailer, it looks like the TV show is taking place during the events of the first game, Halo Combat Evolved, with Master Chief learning about the existence of the Halo Array, the Halo Ring, for the first time. And Season 1 will basically be the story of them just trying to find the ring while also trying to fight off the Covenant. If you just bought Halo Infinite or you've been watching Halo Infinite videos, that game takes place much further forward in the timeline from when what's happening in the TV show will be happening. What I'll do is I'll explain the Halo lore, like the overarching story, and then I'll explain throughout the trailer here in these scenes what they're changing and what they're adding in. The TV show is taking place in what they're calling the Silver Timeline because there's a couple additions like this character here is not from the game. So there'll be a couple minor additions and a couple things they probably will not do from the game's story. But the main character, you all know, Master Chief, also known by his designation, John 117. That's why it has the 117 on his arm there. The number designation he was given when Dr. Catherine Halsey, played by Natasha Leone here, and Lieutenant Jacob Keyes, this guy here, selected him for their Spartan 2 program, their version of a super soldier program, very much in the vein of the Marvel Captain America super soldier program. Catherine Halsey is meant to be a good character, mostly like you get that vibe from the trailer, but she did a lot of messed up things to create these super soldiers. The military did a lot of messed up things to them. What does one do with a superhuman you're not sure you can trust? It's very gray morality because humanity is under the threat of annihilation from the Covenant, so they have to come up with these super soldiers as a last ditch effort to fight them off. They had Master Chief and all the other test subjects abducted when they were children and replaced them with Flash clones genetically programmed to die soon after so that their families would think that they died and wouldn't come looking for them while the military modified them. They trained Master Chief and the other test subjects till about the age of 14. That's when they gave them all their genetic modifications, all their enhancements. In the games, Master Chief is supposed to be the only person who survived the process of enhancement. But on the TV show, it sounds like they're saying that a couple other Spartans survived. Like you have Bokeem Woodbine's character talking about what they did to us, quote unquote. So that's one of the minor changes from the video game story. There are multiple Spartans. Their enhanced abilities are very much in the vein of Marvel's Captain America. Enhanced strength, speed, agility. Most of their bones are nearly unbreakable. Just super soldiers all around. You get a little bit of that vibe during their fighting scenes here with the Covenant soldiers. The present day of the Halo universe is about 300 years in our future during the mid 2500s. Earth still exists and the human civilization is embroiled in a long running war with a collection of alien species called the Covenant, these aliens here. Although there are many different races that make up the Covenant. They're trying to eradicate humans because they believe humans are capable of interacting with and activating Forerunner technology. This stuff here that you see Master Chief interacting with. They're this long dead, highly advanced race that inhabited the universe, leaving behind vastly superior technology like the Halo Arrays. We talk about them as Halo Rings because it looks like a giant ring, but the technical term is Halo Array. There are many of them that exist around the galaxy, and for the most part, the story of the series, the story of the games, all takes place contained within the Milky Way galaxy. The Covenant acts more like a cult who worship the Forerunners as their gods. Their leaders are called prophets. They usually go around the galaxy forcing other alien races to join them. Humans. Surrender. 
surrender to the covenant. They spend countless years traveling around the universe looking for Forerunner artifacts and technology to collect, but their alien races were not capable of activating any of the technology. The Forerunners purposefully chose humans as their successors as guardians of all life in the galaxy, so they made it so that only humans could interact with their tech. That's why you see Master Chief touching this Forerunner artifact and he's able to activate it. Like he says in the trailer, I touched it and something happened. It changed me. The Forerunners died out millions of years ago, killed by a race called the Flood, who is actually the real main villain of the earlier game story, the earlier part of the story just in general. I'll explain the Flood in a second too, but it sounds like the Flood won't be the main villain during Season 1. It'll mostly just be humans versus the Covenant in a search for the Halo Ring. So they probably won't cover the entire backstory on the Forerunners during Season 1. We'll probably get some of it as they start to learn more about the Forerunner technology going to look for the Halo Ring. But millions of years ago, the Forerunners were the most advanced species. They controlled a massive part of the Milky Way galaxy, Earth's galaxy. And at the time, there was an ancient version of humanity that existed in a much more advanced form and began this war with the Flood. That war pushed them into Forerunner territory, but the Forerunners took it as a hostile act by ancient humans and used their technology to de-evolve humans back to Stone Age levels and send them back to Earth. But because the advanced humans were no longer fighting the Flood off, the Flood later began to eradicate the Forerunners, and the Flood is like the sentient plague, like a sentient zombie virus that mutates everything, all life. The Flood is actually a mutated version of the original race that seeded all life in the Milky Way galaxy, and that's called the Precursors in the Halo lore. The Precursors created the Forerunners, they created humans, every race. They seeded the entire Milky Way galaxy with life. You could think of the Precursors as being kind of like Marvel Celestials if you just saw the Eternals movie, like these original, super powerful life forms. Once each species around the galaxy evolved to a certain point, the Precursors would judge whether or not they were worthy of accepting the mantle of responsibility for managing the galaxy, for keeping everything running, being good custodians of reality and existence for all races just in general. Of the races of the galaxy, the Forerunners evolved first, so the Precursors selected them for the mantle of leadership, but then sometime later judged them unworthy and were going to wipe out their race and start over again. Like in the Marvel movies, you see Celestials using the Infinity Stones to judge races and wipe out all life on a planet. They were going to do that to the Forerunners. The Forerunners rebelled against them and killed most of the Precursors, their creators, and then stored their genetic code for future use. Later, they tried to revive the Precursor species, but the test subjects became mutated and turned into the Flood. So the Flood is kind of like a perverted, mutated form of the Precursor original species. Sensing they had massively screwed themselves, the Forerunners then created the massive Halo Array rings all over the galaxy, which are like massive reset buttons for all life in the galaxy. What would happen is that first the Halo Ring would fire these giant pulses all over the galaxy, destroying all life, cutting off the Flood's food source. Then after the Flood had died out, the Forerunners had equipped their special arcs with genetic templates for all the necessary life forms to reseed the galaxy with life, finishing the reboot, the reset process on the galaxy. The Forerunners also created something called the Ark, which is sort of like the one ring of power, one ring to rule them all. The Ark can actually fire all the halo rings around the galaxy simultaneously. Because it sounds like season one of the series is mostly going to be them searching for one halo ring before they learn about the existence of many other halo rings, we probably won't learn about the Ark till maybe like season two. But millions of years ago, the Forerunner's plan kind of works. The galaxy gets a partial reset until millions of years later, species like the Covenant, humans have evolved again to the point where they're spreading around the galaxy, and the Flood has enough food source to become a huge threat again, spreading around the galaxy again. But at least at the beginning of the series, the way they're playing all these scenes in the trailers, at this point in the timeline, humans and the Covenant are mostly focused on their war with each other and not really thinking about the Flood. Humans have not learned about the Halo Rings yet, they're not sure why the Covenant wants to eradicate them yet. So neither one of them are really thinking about the Flood, so that's why I say the Flood might not actually become a huge part of the TV series till Season 2 or Season 3, depending on how they pace the story out. But ultimately, the Flood becomes a much bigger villain. The main idea being that eventually the Covenant and humans will have to band together to fight the Flood off and stop them from consuming all life. But on separate sides, you have other factions of humans and other factions of the Covenant who want the power of the Forerunners, the Halo Rings for themselves. Like, not all humans are good, and not all Covenant are bad. 
I know a lot of you are probably asking about the Arbiter because he's like one of the other major characters of the Halo series. I checked the IMDB list and I didn't see anyone listed as playing the Arbiter, the main Covenant character that you play as during Halo 2. So either they're keeping him secret before episodes drop or we won't meet him till season 2. But episode 1 will drop March 24th, it's a Thursday show, 10 episodes like I said, it'll start right before Marvel's Moon Knight episodes, I will be doing weekly episode videos for that as well. What'll happen is, is I'll do that Halo episode 1 video and we'll just see how everybody responds to it, if it's popular enough, I'll keep doing videos for all the episodes. If you have any other questions about what's going on with the series or just Halo lore and history in general, just write it below in the comments and I'll try to address it. Everyone click here for my brand new Marvel Moon Knight trailer video and click here to learn about the new Joker 2 movie that Warner Brothers and DC are working on. That's right, Joker sequel. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.